We have a, a treat today. We have uh, Dr. Christine uh, Tickles, uh, who is, uh, you know, I mean, I've known Christine now at going back to 2012. We actually studied together at Georgia State. And uh, about six months ago, I, I got to hear her present just in the way that she was working for Newell Rubbermaid at the time, and I'm not going to steal her thunder, uh, but they had to respond to a very interesting and surprising um, challenge that came in a short period of time, and she had to pivot in the midst of that challenge. And she did it in a way where one uh, was looking certainly to mitigate the concerns of the challenge, but also to maybe create some unique opportunities. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, to, to Dr. Sickle. Thanks, Christine. And um, I now own my own uh, marketing agency called Her Story, and I help striving female business entrepreneurs and female founders, business owners to really um, grow their business with great marketing. And I am super passionate about the fact that great marketing starts with great messaging. And you're going to see um, a lot of that today as we talk about um, how to lead within crisis. Um, so this title of the talk today is What's Your Future Story? And I really am passionate about the fact that we are at this time where the choices that we make now during crisis is really going to determine the future story of our business. And one of the things that I find really interesting right now, whether you're watching the news or you're looking at what companies are sort of rising to the top right now, is we're starting to see some new people um, really make a name for themselves or have great communication out there that maybe we hadn't listened to before. And it's because they're finding ways to be really thoughtful during this time and to, to build a different business model or just pivot messaging in order um, to help people within this crisis. And I think all of us have the opportunity to do that no matter what our businesses are. Um, unfortunately, crisis and disruption are, are not new. And although COVID-19 and the speed of what's happening is definitely something that we've never seen before, Disruption of a business or crisis of a business has been something that's been going on forever. Whether you think about Amazon and how they completely disrupted brick and mortar, you think about the arrival of streaming and how it completely changed the model of how people watch content. Um, you look at any sort of ways that people communicate now, that has completely changed. And so the companies that thrive during this time are the ones who look to, in a crisis, either pivot or change their messaging or to think about how they can make their product or offering more relevant to this time. And I really believe that people who are thoughtful about this can do quite well on the other side of this. So let me just tell you about a crisis that I encountered. Um, I, as Berkeley mentioned, I led marketing teams at Newell Brands, and I've led a lot of different brands um, across different categories. And um, one day I was cuddling up, watching my favorite show. And if you guys have not watched This Is Us, it's a great time to watch it on Netflix these days um, if you need some things to binge. But This Is Us has been like one of my favorite shows. And about a year and a half, two years ago, um, everything was going to be unveiled. So I'm not really giving anything away. When you start watching the show, you know that the lead character, Jack, dies but you never know how he dies. And so the, there's this moment about two years ago when the episode was coming out to show how Jack actually um, came to his death. And so all of a sudden you see on the screen that there's a fire and there's this faulty machine that all of a sudden starts a fire that then starts a fire with a towel and then the curtains are on fire and all of a sudden the whole house is starting to go up in flames. And as I am sitting there watching the show, I am heartbroken. And many of you might think that I was heartbroken because Jack, like we were finally learning how Jack died. 
But I was heartbroken because I was leading the marketing team that ran the Crock-Pot brand. And all of a sudden, our beloved brand that had been doing really well and growing in the context of people cooking in the marketplace was now completely under attack. There were all of these people all over the world that started to hit social media and here are some of the things that they were saying about our beloved Crock-Pot. Oh, wow, sales are gonna tank now. Look, the murder weapon. Fans on Twitter saying that they're ready to throw out their Crock-Pots. Others saying they just threw their Crock-Pot away. Um, we'll never use it again because it killed Jack. And so all of a sudden, you wake up one morning and your complete business is under fire and under attack. And what do you do? So we really needed some help. And it was not something that we could take a lot of time on. This was moving fast. And although some of you may say, well, that was just a TV show. For any of you who watch This Is Us or know any This Is Us fans, they absolutely believe that Jack is real. So we had to be super thoughtful about how we approached this crisis. So here was our challenge. One, we immediately needed to become a part of this conversation. Everywhere on social media, late night TV, morning uh, shows, we were being uh, cast as the enemy and as the weapon that killed America's favorite dad. And we needed to work towards a resolution to change the hearts and minds of over 11 million viewers who are watching This Is Us on a weekly basis. So we had to move. So here are the top uh, four things that we really jumped in on as we approached this crisis. And I would say that they are absolutely relevant for today as well. So first, have a plan. Don't play catch up. And for any of you who are business owners, one of the first things that I can tell you is that if you didn't have a crisis management plan, in place, this would be a really good time to build one as you think about for the future, because at some point we will all find disruption or crisis within our business. Luckily, within our business, we had an entire crisis management team that could rally around this without disrupting what we were doing from a day-to-day -day basis. And so we immediately got that team together to start to put an action in place on how we were gonna handle this crisis. The second thing I would recommend in any sort of crisis or, or disruption within your business is that it really is time to over communicate. I've had a lot of people ask me over the past couple of weeks, there's so much COVID-19 communication, whether it's in emails and what you see posted online, what you see on videos and a lot of people are asking well there's so much communication out there maybe it's just time for me to stop because do they just want one more communication from a, you know from a business about COVID-19 and I would say absolutely you need to over communicate like this is the time to be fast and speed and frequency is key it's not just about one time but how do you keep in the hearts and minds of your consumers the way that we did that specifically um, on the Crock-Pot case is at this business actually had um, a website, it had social media, but most of the time that people were coming to our social media, it was to get recipe content. And we didn't have a Twitter account because Twitter isn't a place that you go for recipes, but Twitter was where our brand was being decimated. So we immediately created a Twitter account called Crock-Pot Cares because we wanted people to know that we were empathetic about the situation and we started to really get involved in the conversation. So with that conversation, we immediately pivoted our messaging. And I would tell you in any messaging, uh, as you start to involve yourself in, the, in a conversation, within a crisis, empathy and authority is key. You know, a lot of people, when they saw what was going on on the This Is Us um, uh, crisis, 
so many people just jumped in and were like, hey, he's fiction. Like, we shouldn't spend any time on this as a business. Or let's just put a statement out there telling people that Crockpot is safe. And that was like a fictional story and a fictional character. But that wasn't really coming at it from an empathetic way. There's so many people who watched the show and loved him and loved the storyline. And if we would have just come out with a very sort of straightforward message, it would have been tone deaf. So the first thing that we did is we, the very first Twitter post we put out there, we told people, you know what, everyone, we are heartbroken that Jack has passed as well. And just made sure that everyone knew that we understood how they were feeling. And so in any situation, it's so important for your customers to know that you understand how they feel and then provide the authority. And we did that by showing people that Crock-Pot was a trusted brand for many years and really explaining to them that we've never seen any sort of faulty switch or fires, that that was a, you know, absolutely a fictional thing but we wanted to lead with empathy first. And so I would think about that in the context of your communication. The last thing is be proactive. And in this in instance, we wanted to be proactive to find advocates. We wanted to go out and not only, you know, have conversations that the people that were really blasting the brand, but we wanted to have conversations with the people who love the brand. And we also wanted to engage This Is Us directly and have them be a part of this conversation. And so we started to engage with the This Is Us team, their legal team, their staff, the, the writers themselves to put a plan in place that we could rectify the situation. We chose not to hibernate. We didn't, you know, just say, woe is me and we're going to take the hit and it'll pass. We wanted to be a part of proactively being a part of the conversation. And the way that we were able to do that is we, um, through a lot of hard work and long nights, um, with legal teams and producers, we're able to engage the This Is Us team to um, start a new conversation about Crock-Pot and actually use our language. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Our understanding is this lags a little bit, so we'll actually put the links in the chat as well. But I still think that you'll be able to get the gist of this content and what we were able to create. Big game is fast approaching, and many of us, this day brings an opportunity to gather with friends and family, loved ones that we don't get to see all that often. But in 2018, gathering with friends and family is it's not as easy as what it used to be. The country is divided. Sometimes that can make it tough to find common ground. This year, this year, I think we should all take a breath. Find the ability to forgive, remind ourselves there is no difference so great we can't overcome it. So you'll see there we started a hashtag, Crockpot is innocent, Oops. and we're able to get the actual staff of uh, This Is Us to use Crock-Pot as innocent in their messaging. And we then created an entire um, PR campaign against it. We actually were able to, when um, these characters were on Ellen, because this was a big um, storyline and some other late night TV, we were able to get them to speak our same communication, talk about Crock-Pot being innocent, even giving away Crock-Pots to the uh, audience. And so we were really able to change the conversation. So when I think about these key initiatives or, or key tactics of what you can do in crisis management, first is have a plan. And I realize that's a bit rear view mirror, but I think it's really important that we all think about the plan that we have within our businesses. Second, over communicate. This is a time to over communicate to our customers to let them know what we're doing in the context of a crisis. 
and make sure that they know that we are here to help and we want to uniquely um, lead in our communication with empathy with them. The second is pivoting that messaging. So if we haven't pivoted our message yet in the context of what's going on with COVID-19, I highly recommend that now is the time. And I want to dive in a little bit deeper on that. And then lastly, let's be proactive. You know, so many people are trying to figure out how to navigate in this environment, but I really believe that we got to be out there. We got to be talking to people. And even just the fact that you're all here today um, to engage with your peers and with others to learn is a part of being proactive. And that's really great that you're looking to do that. So how does this apply? And here are some more uh, things that I think you could think about for your specific business or the initiatives that you're working on. So have a plan. Of course, for the discussion with the Crock-Pot uh, case, that was way more about having a, a communication plan. But clearly, we need to have a cash flow plan. We need to be really clear. And I'm sure a lot of you have been working on that in the context of, of how this is affecting your business. Secondly, having a business plan. And when I say business plan, I mean, um, how are we going to make money and what are the things that we're going to do during this 90 days or so that we're sitting in the context, context of COVID-19? What do we need to do either to have a new offering? Um, is there a new product that we could create? Or is it just about a different sort of bundle of the products that we already have and sell? Or do we need to do it in a different way? Um, obviously, we've so, seen so many people like change their business model, whether that be, you know, restaurants going to delivery. I've seen a, a commercial furniture uh, organization that I work with that right now they've pretty much pivoted all their work to the healthcare industry and helping them have more seating. Um, and so how do we how do we think about that for our business? I also had a really interesting example today of um uh, a plastic surgeon who you would think like their business is like like pretty much stopped right now because no one can come into their offices, but they're actually doing online consultations with their um, with their patients. And so I think that's just an interesting idea of like, what are the things that we can be doing to have a new business plan for the next 90 days? And then have a crisis management plan. And if you don't have one, I would recommend to spend the time so that you are prepared in the future. Also, over communicate. So I talked about how do we get in front of our customers? I highly recommend that we're talking to our customers one, at least once a week right now. Hopefully you have email addresses of your customers, like you have ways to communicate them and you're not scrambling to find ways um, to have those proactive communication with them. I'd be communicating with our staff, no matter how big or small they are, to make sure that everybody knows where we're at and how we're moving um, forward. And then with the general public. And I think in the context of the communication, like we're just here to be helpful. This isn't a time, you know, um, and especially as I was saying, to lead with empathy. Um, this isn't a time for us to, you know, try to take advantage of people, of course, during this time. But there are a lot of things that I know and Berkeley has shared with me that all of you are doing that can be really helpful to the community, can be helpful to other businesses. And so how we can be helpful in this time, I think, is really important. For now, it's time to pivot your messaging as well. So if you have a website, if you have email campaigns that you're doing, you really need to update your com content. I see a lot of businesses and brands right now that have changed nothing with their content and it's tone deaf. Like they absolutely are just not really thinking about what others are thinking about or the problems that they may have or the way that they're feeling. And so it really is time to, to pivot your message. Um, you know, I any good brand has now already changed their their website to talk about how they can uniquely help in this particular time, how their products can help or their service. And then I'd also be spending time right now on pivoting your message for later. You know, more than likely we're going to be in some sort of recession, um, you know, even if it's not for a long time, but people probably are going to be thinking about their budgets and their wallets. So a businesses may be tightening up on the, the budgets that they have to spend for the remainder of the year. And so how can you think about if that's going to be top of mind with businesses, how can your messaging 
come in and really uniquely help uh, people solve that problem. And so these would be things that, you know, I'd highly recommend that, that you're working on now if you haven't done already. And then also I'd be super proactive. So to me, you know, for any small business, a sales funnel is survival. Hopefully you've been collecting ways, whether it's email addresses or others, uh, other ways to communicate directly with your customers. Um, but these bu businesses that have those are able to immediately get new communication out in front of um, in front of their customers. And so I think it's just really important. Think about how their problems have changed and what you can uniquely do to solve them. Um, it's time to be innovative. You can be super creative. And sometimes for some businesses, that's just with your messaging. With others, it's your offering. Like, do you need to think about a different way to bundle or promote your services? And with others, it's true innovation from a product perspective, either how their per current products can be used um, in the context of what we're facing right now, or if there's a way to pivot and quickly um, adjust and make something new that's helpful um, to the community or, or the customer that you serve. Um, I'd also spend a good amount of time thinking about how can you reach out with this new message or offer? How do you ensure that people know what you're doing? So I want to finish and let you know that, you know, the Crock-Pot brand actually did not um, die in the context of this, uh, of this crisis. We spent the time to do the things that I mentioned to you, and um, really that was a way for us to win and to pivot and rewrite the story. It could have been a really dire story for the brand, at least for a period of time, but we were able to re rewrite it to something um, really exciting. And let me show you how that played. This week, there was an absolutely gut-wrenching episode. Father Jack turns off the family's old janky crock pot. It shorts out, bursts, flames, house generated. This is us fans were traumatized, and they turned their fury against their crock pots. You attend crock pot controversy. We have finally learned the cause of Jack Tears. Some viewers death. are actually coming out with very upsetting. A lot of people. Like a lot of people. This year, I think we should all take a, find the ability to forgive, remind ourselves, no difference, so great, can't overcome it. I own a crosspot, I love crosspot. <laughs> They give you a housewoman. So it's going to go on that shelf. I enjoy a good crop pot. So again, we'll add that um, to um, link so that you guys are able to see that. And then I'm just trying to get out of this here. No, nope, we don't want to watch it again. So the, one of my favorite um, quotes is that in that whole um, bit is that we went from being the brand that killed America's favorite dad actually winning the Super Bowl without even having a commercial. We had more impressions and views um, than most brands who had spent anywhere from five to $10 million for a 30 second spot. And we didn't spend anything. It was a lot of long nights, a lot of hustle and being super proactive and thinking about what can we do to pivot in order to save our business and our brand. 
So to me, that story may be very different than what you do today. And it's clearly not what COVID, what we're dealing with with COVID-19, but it is an example of a crisis. And I really believe when we share our stories with each other that they can be, bring clarity to like what our past is and what we're dealing with right now so that we can write our own future. So with that, what is your future story going to be? And you have the opportunity, you know, to write it right now. 